Welcome, fellow beekeepers. This is Jamie Walters, OSBA's Maumee Valley Director and News Editor. I'm pleased to announce OSBA's new live webinar training series. Live sessions are recorded on the second and fourth Sunday of each month, 7 p.m. through Zoom conference call. You're welcome to attend by making a reservation on OSBA's website at www.ohiostatebeekeepers.org. Go to the events page and scroll down to the event you would like to attend. Confirm your RSVP by filling out the registration form with your city, state, name, and email address. Approximately two hours before the beginning of Sunday's webinar, an active Zoom link will be sent to your email address. Each training session will be recorded and posted on the following Sunday on OSBA's new YouTube channel. You can find it at Ohio State Beekeepers Association. You're welcome to subscribe and be sure to click the bell to be alerted each time we upload a new video. Each month's speakers and presentation will be posted on the Facebook page, by direct email to registered and paid members, and our website at ohiostatebeekeepers.org. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me at editor at ohiostatebeekeepers.org. And now on to our previous recorded webinar. Turn this over. I would like to introduce the OSBA president, a queen and nuke producer, and a good friend, Peggy Garns. All right. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being patient um, and allowing me to go ahead and fill in for Alex this evening. And tonight, um, we're going to talk about nukes and overwintering. And um, so my background, I've kept bees for way over 20 years. Uh, last several years, I've run about 140 beehives. And um, this year has been an interesting one. So I'm hoping that as we talk about this tonight, that it makes a little bit more sense because in just two weeks, on the 21st of June, the bees are gonna start thinking about overwintering. And um, even though we still haven't seen our first tomato yet, um, they're getting ready for winter. So getting started, let me see where we can move this so I can make sure that we see everything. So like we just, like I just said, that the bees are gonna start getting ready for their winter. Wait, somehow this jumped way over. Okay. Um, you're gonna to find too that as we talk about this, um, bees, when we start nukes later in the year, they grow to the size of their cavity. Um, I have found that five frame deeps work best um, or three mediums, five frames. You're gonna find that most of the time that when I start mine is the first to second week in August. And I'm up here in Medina County, so I'm not sure where everyone is. So we've had a real late start this year, but by starting them the first week or so in August, they'll still grow to about 35, 40 pounds. They stay nice and gentle because there's not a whole lot there for them to defend. And you'll find that they become very, very self-sufficient. So actually this is pretty timely because you're gonna start working on this process in July. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you have no mites. Uh, for those that are new beekeepers, um, we're trying to teach in the classes to start looking for mites and checking for them in April, May, so that by the time July rolls around, you've been able to remove all the mites out of your colonies. So no mites, no virus, no nosema. Um, Jamie and I talked before that we might have to have a presentation on how to check for nosema. Um, you're gonna have a new queen or a queen cell. Uh, you're gonna start with two frames of dark cat brood. Uh, one frame of nectar pollen, because we know in July, sometimes resources and out there blooming. So you wanna make sure that they have inside food to be available. And then two frames of foundation, because when those two frames of dark cat brood emerge, those little bees need something to do. So brand new comb will be easy. So what, this is middle of June, so start getting ready now. Lots of boxes. Again, pick whatever you're going to be using, whether it's deep boxes or mediums. Um, 
Again, like I said, I like to go into winter with my nuke boxes, two deeps in a honey super. Um, but I do have a lot of people that I've helped in the past that will run into winter with just three mediums and they get through fine. Pick your hives now that you're going to use as your donor hives. Um, you know, ones that maybe didn't quite build up as nice. You'll see on this row um, to your right, there's two deeps. There's one, two, three donor hives. Uh, two of them, uh, well, one of them is two deeps and two honey supers. The one in the medium in the middle is two deeps and one honey super. And the one on the end is three deeps and a honey super. So the one on the very end is going to be the one I'll probably graft from or take the eggs or larvae to make queen cells from. The one in the middle is an underachiever. That's going to be the one that we're going to use for the donor hive. So you're going to notice also as we go through the presentation that all my boxes are pretty much painted brown, uh, mainly because where I'm at is um, we get a lot of overcast uh, skies from the lake. We get a lot of lake effect where I'm at. Uh, so if they're painted dark brown, we're going to get a little bit of extra solar gain. So even on a cloudy day. And so that kind of tends to help a little bit. So if you can keep them in full sun, yes, last week it was brutal, what, 90 some degrees. I nearly died out there. It was so stinking hot. Um, but if the bees have to keep the queen at 90 degrees, it's less work for them. They can spend that time um, building comb, taking care of young, uh, working on foraging. Uh, so again, it's a plus for them. Always have fresh water access. Uh, even though I do have some several bird baths around that are dedicated to the bees, apparently they prefer uh, the yucky water around the edge of the pond. And I think that's because they get more uh, nutrients and mineral salts, that sort of thing. Uh, from the, the yuck on the edge of the pond. Um, being that they're a small colony, small entrance, about a half inch is really nice, an inch tops, and make sure you use a mouse guard. Um, on the nukes, I usually put the mouse guards on Labor Day weekend, just because the mice on a 40 degree night, they're looking for somewhere warm to live. Um, the ones that I start in August will be started on a solid bottom board. Uh, so you're going to want to make sure that you have ventilation at the top. Uh, the ones now have all been transitioned over to screen bottom boards for those stinking 90 degree days. Uh, if you are going to do a screen bottom board, the slide tray, pull it out at least about an inch. Uh, just to make sure you have good ventilation going through there. And if you note on the bottom is, you'll see these, the picture here shows them sitting directly on the ground. But for winter, uh, you want to have them, maybe like a two by four would be fine, but you want them a little bit off of the ground. So the wait for winter. Um, I have a friend that's up in Michigan and she shoots for 26 pounds is her, her goal weight for her nukes to go into winter. Um, mine, I like 40 pounds. Um, more is always better for me, weight wise. Um, then you don't have to feed as much. Uh, again, two deeps of nuke boxes and then a honey super is awesome. That way you don't have to really feed. But if you do, uh, I really like the uh, Danny Slaba's um, boiled, Candy board method, you'll notice this, uh, the picture to the left. Those are made and smashed into, um, there's those little tiny uh, bread pans and I line them with uh, wax paper and then you can pop them out real easy. Uh, those are like small bricks, about two inches thick and it's like four by six maybe. Uh, the picture to the right is Danny's method where you uh, I've made shims, and there's a small uh, three-eighths hole, or half-inch hole maybe, um, on the end by the one-pound honey jar. Uh, that becomes then their upper entrance, and then I line the counter with 
wax paper, put the shim on it, pour it in there, and make sure you put the jar in there. That way they have access up and down. So wrapping, that's a tough one. Um, depending, I think, where you're at and where those hives are at. If you're in an area where there's a lot of wind, uh, wrapping probably would be beneficial. Um, you can wrap with styrofoam board. Um, the top right picture shows three sides covered with the styrofoam board. Uh, the top box is a feed box. Uh, roofing paper. Um, yeah, for $20, you get like this giant roll at the home improvement show or the home improvement store. So maybe the club could share that and measure out. It's about 72 inches for, I believe, the deeps. Um, because what we're gonna, what I'm gonna recommend is that you bump two together so they share a common heat wall. And then wrap them with the black paper and then put a lid on top of it to keep the snow out of it. Um, the picture in the center bottom is that's just a plain cardboard box. It's not anything special. Uh, it's just wrapped around it and then it had a bungee cord to hold it on. Uh, that box was a single nuke box, uh, two deeps, feed box on top with an upper entrance, and that was right on the dock. And so there was no uh, wind break at all, and wind went under the dock, across the pond, and um, so they did great. Uh, there's also those black waxed cardboard boxes from Man Lake. Um, I think I can say that. Can I say that? Anyway, they come from Man Lake. And um, they're about like $10. Um, make them bring them to you at one of the shows, though, because the shipping kills you on them. But it's perfect size if you get the, um, the loose-fitting ones. that you can It fits right over the two nukes. And what's nice about those is when you're done with them, you can just take them off, fold them in half, put them in the barn till next year. Moving on to the windbreaks. Um, you can see several assorted pictures there. Uh, a natural windbreak, of course, is best. Um, the picture in the center to the right, there's grapevines there, and then there's also a stand of, kind of, we call them snowball bushes, I'm not real sure what they are, uh, but they're about four, five feet tall, and they're pretty dense, so they get a nice windbreak that way. Um, you can do the, the straw bales, in a black plastic bag, but if they get wet, then they mold and it's kind of stinky in the spring then. Um, the center picture, you notice that I even use the patio furniture cushions. Um, you know, anything is good, you can use. Um, burlap drape, I did that one year for the field bees um, on the north side of the barn because there is no protection there and it comes across about an acre field and uh, gets pretty brutal on that side. So I did the burlap drape. Um, the deer tend to get messed with that. Um, so I only did that a couple years and that was the end of it. And the snow drifts make an excellent uh, windbreak. Um, and we're gonna talk about those a little bit more. We met, I mentioned a little bit earlier about sharing a heat wall. Um, the picture there is Mike Palmer's setup where it's a double bottom solid and then there's a wooden half inch divider board in between and then two frame, two four frame nuke boxes go above it and you can use your 10 frame lid to fit very comfortably on top of that. Um, again, they're gonna share that bottom heat wall and that helps uh, less stress for the cluster um, and again, you're going to either wrap it or styrofoam, something like that. Um, I find that if you put the capped honey on the common wall, it'll help absorb heat during the day and radiate it back into the brood at night. So it'd be capped honey on the inside, then your two brood frames and your queen, and then capped honey on the outside. And then the box above it is going to be all capped honey. So here's some picture variations. Um, let's start with the one on the left. Uh, those are two 
nuke boxes pushed together. The one on the far left is two deeps and two feed boxes above it. The little one next to it with the blue bottom is just two deeps with no feed box above them. The picture on the top right is two nuke boxes bumped together, wrapped together with their little migratory lids on them. Um, the one with the red bottom, uh, Mike Palmer uses burlap sacks as his kind of like an inner cover type thing. Uh, so I tried that one year. I just didn't like how it looked. It worked fine, but I didn't like how it looked. In the bottom center picture, uh, those are an assortment of organized nukes there. Um, the first two are two um, are two production hives. Those are just went in. Those were kind of like the um, the constant there. The third one in was the two deeps, and then it had an overboard with two nukes above each one, uh, double nukes, and then wrapped. The next one over is the two deeps with an overboard, which is a double screen, um, kind of divider type thing. And then that's directly above your two deeps in your production hive. And then there were two five frame nukes on that one with inner cover and then two feed boxes above it. And the nukes were wrapped in the tar paper. And then the next one over is, of course, the two deeps, uh, the overboard, and then the two nukes above it, two feed boxes, and no wrapping. And then the last two were just the, uh, the two deeps with the overboards and the two nukes with no feed boxes and wrap. All of them made it. So uh, I guess my little experiment didn't work that well. Um, the only problem I found that by using the overboard is the production hives below it, those two deeps, they create an awful lot of moisture just through the metabolic activity. So that seemed to be more of an issue on the ones that were wrapped. So I did have to ventilate the tops a little bit more. And if you look at the, the picture on the bottom right hand side, uh, you'll see the configuration. Um, this is how they were set up the first part of November. Once everyone stops flying, if you need to move nukes, move them then. So of course the blue bottom one has two deeps, an inner cover, um, and then a feed box. I was hoping that would give us some dead air space. And then the two nukes above it. And then the one on the other side is uh, the same configuration. Are we doing okay on questions? No questions yet? No okay. questions yet, Peggy. Cool. All right. Um, okay, so here we are in winter. I don't think I have a date stamp on this one, uh, but we just explained all this configuration. If you notice, the, um, the snow covered up the lower entrances, which is okay. Um, these, all these hives also are sitting on, they're, they're bordered and it, they have eight inches of um, 57 limestone. So there's really good drainage under them. Um, and the gutters that run off of that um, equipment barn are then, it is drained off into the field to the far right. So anyway, you'll see the, um, the dead bees in the snow, yay. That shows that you do have housekeeping going on and the hives are still alive. Uh, what I was really looking for too in this picture I wanted to show you was, if you notice, the top of the hives are not melting. All right, that shows you that there is a good insulation block on it. Uh, the migratory lids that you see uh, on the nukes, um, we make here, my husband makes them for me, it's uh, two by 10. And then we prime them and flat black them. So that gives a nice little insulation uh, property to it. And then you'll notice the wind guard is to the very far right of the picture. It's a clear plastic, um, Kind of like people use for greenhouses um, that's put up there on the because the garden's on the other side of that so the wind kind of whips right over we talked a little bit before about the overboard um, again i used to purchase some from brushy mountain and we know they're no longer with us 
Um, I don't know if someone else has picked them up. Um, we have 30 of them here, so we really don't need any more. But, you know, if you guys are going to look for them, again, you want to watch because if you put them above a real strong production hive to overwinter, you will have to do something extra for moisture. Um, as I'm setting them up, you'll notice the middle picture, that's a September picture. They're in one deep, very populous. You want to shove them down into one deep box so that the queen stays concentrated there. Um, they are on an overboard, so I put them up on a little plastic tote so they can get their uh, ventilation. And then once the, um, going into November when all pretty much flying activity where they'd have to find their way home ceases, then you can go ahead and move it over to your, uh, put it on top of your deeps. Um, let me think what else. If you notice, I think over in the top right hand one, notice where that's melting a little bit. Um, when you have something like that, you want to check because that means there's too much heat hitting the top of that inner, those covers. So you want to see, make sure that they're not overheating in there and that you have good ventilation so you don't have a mold issue coming up in spring. Uh, let me think. And I think that's good there. We'll move on to the styrene hives. Uh, these are have become a, a favorite of mine. Um, the top right-hand picture, those are two deeps. There's six frames in each box with a feed box and then the lid. And I strap them together because these are out in a field next to the, we have like about a, uh, 50 feet of uh, grapes that run across there and the little snowball bushes. So sometimes the wind gets pretty brutal, but you'll notice that how much snow has gone up. I mean, they've already covered the one deep box and it's about halfway up the other. I used to go through and dig them out. I don't anymore just because um, air can get through there. And it's interesting, the ventilation um, that they do set up in there. And I never get any moisture buildup in there. The big problem that I found with it is no peaking. Uh, do not open them because then it becomes like a small cooler and you let all the heat out and it's very difficult for them to um, build up more heat again. It has a nice little feed around the top so you don't have to open the hive at all, but you just need to make sure that you correctly set it up and that they are ready to go in September so that by November you're not opening anything. Um, and you notice the little sign down there in the bottom, don't, no peeking. I tell people to also um, check them often. Going into winter, make sure that you know what they're weighing. And by checking often, what you're checking is the weight. So you're going to reach behind them and give them like a little heat, see what their weight is at. Um, the picture down on the on the bottom right hand corner uh, that was some of the earlier years of the nuke production uh, where I thought it would be easier just to bump them all together. Um, I did find out that didn't work because when they choose what wall to share, it may not be the ones that you want. If you notice like the one that to the left is the nuke box, it's five frames on the bottom inner cover, feed box on top. The next one over went in as two deeps. So, you know, if the cluster gets to the top, it has no one to share a heat wall with. Um, that could be detrimental, so you wanna make sure that they have heat walls. Uh, the next two were, would have been two correctly ones set up. Notice they both went in with one deep, inner cover, feed box above. Those could share the bottom inner heat wall. Um, if you find that they're pulling up too fast, that you're going to have to add more food. So again, we talked about the candy boards. Uh, some people use the um, sugar camp or dry camp method where you put in some newspaper, just pour the sugar right on it, spritz it a little bit. Uh, that will work. Um, I've also had people tell me that they'll pour the sugar directly around the whole of the inner cover. 
Uh, I always like to make sure that when I add food, that it's dry. The can I really like the candy boards because the bees can move up to them and eat. They also absorb the moisture. You can give them frames of capped honey, um, but sometimes that's a little bit more work for them where a candy board is a little bit um, multi-purpose. Absorbs moisture and provides food. So check them often. So in December, we already talked about this picture about um, just wrapping them up in the cardboard box and using a bungee cord so it doesn't blow away. Um, but again, this was um, in December. You can see the upper entrance. If it's a warm enough day, they're going to get out. They're not going to go very far, but at least they can get cleansing flight. Um, you'll notice the bricks on the top. It, if it's windy, you can strap them together or even strap together. I'd weight them down. Uh, make sure you got a, your moisture is going to be controlled. Um, I like full sun if possible. Uh, in the winter, it doesn't bother me, but it helps them. But the big thing, too, for these guys is mouse guards. Very, very important. Again, ch start checking your weight. If you know what the weight was in November when their final resting spot was, then you're going to have a benchmark to go for from there. In January, uh, make sure that upper entrance stays open. If not, at least make sure the upper entrance is open. Uh, we already talked about the candy boards uh, being very efficient. Uh, those can go right on in lieu of the inner cover. If you were going to do those candy blocks, you want to get those up off of the, the bars. So what I do is put um, three popsicle sticks glued together is perfect B space, three eighths of an inch. Um, those come in real handy because again, if it's just on to off of the top bars, um, more bees can get up to feed on it. If you put it right on the top bars, they only have the spaces between the bars to feed. So boost it up a little bit. If you don't want to do the popsicle sticks, just any little stick that's three eighths of an inch ish is fine. Again, check your weight. February, I consider that my halfway point. Um, not a whole lot to do except keep checking that weight. Normally in March, if you're going to lose them, that's when it's going to be. Uh, because there's a lot of up and down temperature that goes on. In March, I will go ahead and start giving liquid feed. And I do also start giving them a little bit of pollen patty. Um, a lot of times my overwintered nukes, if they went in with two deeps, they'll get another deep added. And then as soon as I can start raising queens, two of those boxes come off and turn into mating nukes then. And let me think what else. So that's about it. Make sure they have plenty of room because it's really sad when your nuke swarms. Okay, April. Um, you're pretty much out of the out of the woods then. Again, keep building them up, add more boxes, um, give them plenty of foundations. These guys are like little brood factories. It's a perfect size cavity for them to keep expanding upward. Um, you can bottom super, but I find that it's a weight issue. Um, and they're just as happy to go up. So keep adding boxes with foundation. You'll get nice, dry, fresh comb that way. Um, usually by the time April hits, they're at about three to four, five frame nukes deep. This way I can make nukes from each one anywhere from five or six comfortably nukes, starting them with two or three frames of dark cat brood and then keeping the original queen working where she was. But that's a picture of a 10 frame production hive opened up in April. So that was looking pretty good. So, um, I guess if we have any questions, we could start working on those.
All right, we have one from John. It says, do you put insulation board inside the inner cover? If so, what material? Um, yes, sometimes. If they're out in the field and they're fighting with the wind all the time, yes, I do. And what I get is the pink um, board from the home supply store. Um, it's the Royal Dense one. And then what I usually do with that is I will cut a four inch hole in the center right above the inner cover hole. So that way, if I have to put a feed jar in there, it goes right through. Is that good? Yep. Um, anybody else have any other questions at this point? It's an easy group. <laughs> on the pictures that we're looking at now, um, we're in Lafayette Township, so we're just a tad bit south of Medina, and we're in a little bit of a depression so that when, uh, when we get dumped on snow, we get really dumped on. Um, Medina might get a half inch or so, and I'll get like four to six inches. So I'm not sure what we're picking up off of, but we really get dumped on. It seems, too, that the bees that go through the nukes um, do better when it's really cold. I think because they cluster up tighter, they're sharing that wall. Um, it makes it much, much easier for them to get through when it's real cold. This up and down is really difficult for them. I have a question from Laura. Who did you mention for the feeding, feeding slash candy board, Danny? Uh, Danny Slaba, and I believe he's out of the Indiana group. Um, he's more of like it, South Bend. Yeah. Do, do we have his, Could we put his link up on that? Or I could yep. send it to you and you could push it up. Yep, and what I'll do is I'll post that on OSBA's Facebook page. There you go. Yeah, he has a very nice, he's got the whole recipe. There is um, the only drawback to that. It's about, um, makes about 35 pounds of candy board. So if you have a lot of hives, it's really good. If you only have like one or two, I would suggest doing it as a club project. And then when you're done pouring them all out, everybody brings a five pound bag of sugar because you'll need about 30 pounds of sugar to make this. And um, that way everybody gets to take home a couple of candy blocks or bring your shim and you could pour it in. And Jamie will push that up. And Kevin, or, and we have one from, it's an iPad. This okay. is what, it, what exactly is an overboard? Uh, an overboard is a double screened, um, like double nuke board. Um, what it does is that the double screening keeps any queen from getting up to try to kill your queen in your nuke above it. Um, and it fits snugly over a 10 frame deep so that it won't shift or slide in the winter. Uh, but the double screen part keeps, uh, you get the heat, you get the pheromones, uh, but you don't get any interaction between the bottom hive and your two nukes above it. So there, there's no fighting or killing going on. And Kevin, he put um, MDA splitter. No, that is not the one we we're talking about. It's Danny Slayball. He's in South Bend. Um, Phyllis has a question. So when you set up your nuke, the honey pollen on the outside, then two, two frames of cat brood, correct? Is that correct? Yes. The honey pollen goes on the inside wall, then your two frames of dark cat brood, and your queen or queen cell and then the other two frames is foundation, and you're gonna do that the first or second week of August at the latest for me up here in Medina. So I will graft like the last week of July, the queens will be due to come out in the first week or so in August, and they will build up to 35 to 45 pounds. Um, 
by October. Burns got a question. At what point is weather permitting in the winter months? What weather is appropriate to check on the hive? For a nuke, you are not going to open it unless it's like 60 or above. Um, that's why you're going to get your weight in like say October, November and see how heavy they are. And that is what you're going to be checking. If they are too light then and they keep losing weight because they're eating too much and they're still alive in there, then what you're going to do is you got to add food. You know, like say if it's March or end of February, then you are going to go really quick, uh, have a helper, everybody put their veil on and gloves and move very quickly. One person takes the lid off, uh, the other person takes the inner cover off. The first person goes back, adds the food either as a, a candy board or as a candy, the candy block will go above the inner cup so you're not letting heat out. And then you button everything back up, back up very quickly. You don't want, you want to leave, lose as little heat as possible. Is that, does that answer the question? Yep. Um, I have one from John. It says, do you treat your nukes for Varroa? When my nukes go into winter, they have no mites. I make sure that the hives that are the donor hives that are being broken up to make the nukes are mite free before we start the process. Remember I said back in uh, June and July, you wanna be mite free by then. I'm very, I'm a stickler on that one. And Vern says, thank you. Uh, I'm going to, if there's any other questions for Peggy, go ahead and go ahead and send them if you'd like to. And somebody was asking about a double screen board. And I'm going to pop that up on the screen for everybody to share here. And if somebody can give me a head nod, if they can see the double screen board at this time. Uh, that won't work, but that's okay. That's kind of a double screen board. Yep. I will find, um, I'll go get one and take a picture of it. Okay. And we can push that up on Facebook also. All right. Thank you, Peggy. So, okay, we have another question. How do you say you check your weight of each nuke? Um, I just lift them from behind. You know, I've done this for many years now, so I pretty much know what 40 pounds feels like, uh, like a bag of dog food. Um, if you aren't comfortable with doing that, is you can get one of those luggage scale hook things and um, hook it to the back of the hive and pull it up. See what it registers, hook it to the front of it, pull it up, and then add the two weights together. But always do two because you want them to be working together to share the heat wall. Great questions, everyone. Excellent uh, questions. If I'm going to go ahead and put a poll up, just an ending poll. This is, did you find the information helpful for your apiary operation? The length of the presentation was, and then a fill in. And did you learn something new about the present during, or did you learn something new during the presentation? And will you plan on trying overwintered nukes? And we've got another question. If you have any nukes from spring swarms, should you just keep them as nukes or for resources or expand them into 10 frame? Mm. Okay. If you got them in the spring, they should have grown. If they, if the queen was worth her salt, she should have grown into a 10 frame or eight frame um, equipment that you have. Um, you could leave them in a five frame nuke, but they're going to grow to, they're going to grow exponentially and they could swarm on you. And then you kind of lose all that work. Um, so I would say if it's a spring one, let her build up 
and then evaluate her in August. And if she's like mm, struggling a little bit, then I would push her back into a nuke box and make sure that you give her enough resource um, and keep her in the same location. All right. Um, and then after that, you know, um, keep her in a nuke box to go into winter. If you have extra brood, though, from building, you know, from knocking her down into nuke boxes is make another nuke next door to her so she can share that heat wall with the new one and then give that one um, either a queen or a queen cell or get a 48 hour cell and go ahead and let her um, mate up and then you have two going into winter. Very good. And I'm gonna personally uh, apologize to Kevin. He did have the recipe. It is Danny Slayball's recipe on Mel Delsicone's website. So if you scroll up into the chat, it's HTP or HTTP semicolon forward slash www.mdasplitter.com forward slash docs, D O C S forward slash candy dot PDF. I can print it off, share it. I've used that same thing for, gosh, I don't know how many years. Um, and again, like I said, the only downside is there's a, it makes a lot of them. So maybe make it as, uh, usually twice in the fall, like in November and December, people come to the house and there's like five of us, we all get together and we'll make a batch in the kitchen and divvy it up. It's a nice way to kind of hang out on those cold, crummy days. And then everybody goes home with, a, um, with candy blocks for like two or three hives. So that helps a lot. I have one question for you from Kevin. It says, which is better to overwinter? Five frame over or five over five or a single 10 frame B? Wow. I think five over five because I can put two of them together and they seem to overwinter better than a 10 frame deep single. And, and I'm going to agree with this. I also produce nukes and queens. And if I do a five over five over five, I did about 35 of them this, this spring and every one of them came through winter time. Yep. Um, a question from Ed. Do you oh. think dark hives do better because of the heat properties? Yes, definitely. Solar gain. In, in Ohio, we have crazy, crazy winters. They're up and down, so it keeps them, it's easier for them to maintain um, a more ambient temperature. Um, go back to the previous question about is it better five over five or 10? Think about it this way. If the bees are hungry and they need to move up to get food, they can easily follow the heat plume in a nuke box and go up from one to the next one to the third one. If they are in a 10 frame and the, you have capped honey on each side and say they go to the south side wall and eat all that honey and then we get a cold spell, how are they gonna get to the other side to get the honey? It's harder for them to migrate in a 10 frame box, you know, cause the cluster is gonna normally go in in the center going into winter where if it's in a five over five, they can follow the heat plume and go up for food easier, less uh, frames to navigate. We have a question from valued user. Do you add honeybee healthy or add anything to the candy boards? Um, yes and yes. In Danny's recipe, it has like, um, I forgot how many ounces of honeybee healthy. I put a shot glass in, I think that's kind of funny. Um, and then I also add like one pound of buckwheat honey. That's what gives it the odd color. You probably noticed that the blocks were kind of like more of a um, amber color and the poured candy boards were a darker color. The darker one is because they have um, uh, buckwheat in there. It's supposed to have more minerals, be healthier. I fear, hey, give, it, give those kids a, as much of a push extra as we can. And then Danny's in, in the candy recipe, it says whip in one ounce of honey bee healthy. Yes. That's the last step. And I think also in there, it says that you can add some honey. Um, again, make sure it's your own honey and not store-bought stuff. 
um, and it needs to be from your apiary um, because again, it, it will be heated. So you just don't want to be passing any spores of anything around. So make sure it's your honey. Great questions, everybody. These are yeah. wonderful questions. Awesome. Everybody do some nukes. We got to be more sustainable. <laughs>